Welcome and well met. I am the Quonset Manager, and this is the fourth installment in the Great Bear Island Tourist Information Kiosk video series. This video will be a discussion of the psychology of the long dark. There are many themes in the long dark, but the theme is only part of the picture. There are many psychological principles at work here, and we will go over each in turn. Immersion. The primary crux of The Long Dark is its immersion factor. The game does a good job helping you to identify with your avatar in the game, be it Will or Astrid. The game only allows first-person perspective and has no reflective surfaces. You can only see yourself on the saddest screens, such as when you manage what clothes you are wearing. A constant reminder is the breath that you see on the screen. Many people find it annoying, but it's a constant reminder that your avatar is present. You're not just a camera floating around, you are, in the game, a human being walking about. It helps to create the illusion that you are the avatar. And while the world is visually appealing, I believe that what completes the experience is the constant background sounds. Most of the sounds are some form of white noise. True, occasionally you do hear music of some sort at specific times and in specific circumstances. However, normally the noise washes away any other sounds that you might hear that are not from the game. Players who have the headphones in, even when the sound is down, will have a difficult time hearing or understanding anybody around them talking. And this helps to eliminate any distractions and allows the player to focus on the game itself. And finally, the character you play is helpless without you. If you tell the Will or Astrid to do something stupid, they do it, and suffer the consequences without mercy. This unforgiving nature of the game forces you to constantly pay attention. It's not a game where you can get up and go away for a few minutes and come back, because there's a very good chance when you return you'll be dead. It's this requirement for constant attention that actually deepens the experience. Random Reinforcement The second aspect of the game's psychology is random reinforcement. The game keeps you in crisis, so you have to work hard to gather resources, which are random in nature. So even when you do gather enough to survive, or even more than you need to survive, because of resources random nature, and that always in the back of the mind you understand that a great deal of the low-hanging fruit, to use the phrase, is transient in nature and will not be replaced, well, you continue to go out and gather more and more, even if you don't need it, even if it's way in excess of anything you'll need for quite a long time. In effect, every backpack you look into, every locker you open, and every corpse you check for loose change is just another pull on the long dark slot machine. And it is this aspect of human nature when dealing with random reinforcement that it pulls you in and keeps you going forward. Responsibility and Obligations Fulfilled The single best indicator of happiness is self-esteem. The best way to increase self-esteem is to accept responsibility and more importantly, to fulfill it. When you accept responsibility, no matter how trivial, you have purpose. If you succeed, you gain pride in your actions. However, if you fail, you still can gain self-esteem if you fulfill the obligations that are due upon failure. For example, people who have pets are often happier, even though most pet owners will have many a complaint about their pets. The pet is often a strain on money, time, and resources. Well, if you have a cat and your responsibility is to keep it alive, you feel pride for doing so, regardless what it costs you. However, all cats get old. All cats get sick. Some people just hand the cat over to the vet to be put to sleep when the time comes. However, there are some owners who go in and watch the cat be put down, staring right into its eyes, feeling horrible in the moment. But in the long run, they don't feel bad. They failed to keep the cat alive, but they fulfilled their obligation in failure. They were there right to the bitter end. They have nothing 
to regret because they did the very best they could every moment they could. The Long Dark is like that. It is your responsibility to stay alive or to keep your avatar alive. Eventually you will fail. If you fought tooth and nail right up to the bitter end, your obligation is fulfilled. You tried your best, it just wasn't good enough. But you still did your best. You did not quit, you merely failed. Thus, win or lose, you can take joy in your victories and pride in a battle well fought when you lose. Deferred Gratification versus The Moment People who know how to defer gratification are happier than those who do not. Live for tomorrow, for tomorrow you may die, works, if indeed there is a pretty good chance you're going to be dead tomorrow. Unfortunately, or fortunately, most people don't die tomorrow. For the vast majority of us, it would be more along the lines of live for tomorrow, because there is a pretty good chance you're going to live until you're in your 70s and God help you if you waste your life now. Long-term planning leads to long-term happiness. However, the reason for this is so that at some point you can live in the moment. You cannot defer gratification forever. Eventually, you earn the right to reap what you sow. The long dark makes you seesaw back and forth between these two poles. A common problem is road flares and stim injections. And new players will hoard these for a rainy day and often die with dozens of both. The game encourages long-term planning, but because it's open-ended, there is no clear point at which you should reap. Experienced players learn that saving for a rainy day is great in theory, but in the long dark, it is always raining. As you play, you learn to live for the now, knowing that if you only think of the future, you won't recognize the trouble you're currently in. By learning to balance these two polar opposites, you learn how to play the game. Independence. I think one of the reasons why the sandbox mode is so much more popular than the story mode, it's not just the story or any of the details, I'll get into that in another video. I think it's because in story mode, you aren't alone. With NPCs to lean on, the infinity fires that are here and there depending on where you are in the scenarios, your survival becomes less of a triumph and more of a team effort. The sandbox mode goes out of its way to push the isolation onto the players. The player is alone, and thus there is no one to blame and no one to steal credit. The game is not forgiving and it allows you to fail. It tries to kill you when you take a chance and go for that one spot that might have a rifle, however it's past an entire pack of wolves, well, you feel a certain amount of pride when you survive those wolves and find the rifle, if it's there. If not, well, then you need to find a way to get back out of there and survive getting past all those wolves. However, if you do, you can then take pride in surviving a poor decision. You took a chance, and your chance was wrong, but you survived your bad choice, and thus, no one else can take that from you. Nobody can tell you that you didn't do it alone. This is what I think is the final puzzle to the piece of the long dark psychology. It's a game that rewards skill and calculated risk and mercilessly punishes ignorance. But either way, you earn the result, nobody else. There is no player versus player mode. You didn't die because somebody was a sniper. You died because of your own choices. You took a chance and you lost, but you chose. Your action, your plan, you own it. No one can take that from you. In the game, you are isolated and alone, but you are also independent and self-sufficient. So while all these psychological aspects taken together form the game, I think it's this final aspect, the ownership of your own destiny, for weal or for woe, that is what lures so many players to take the isolated path into the long dark.
Thank you for stopping by the Bear Island Tourist Kiosk. Be sure to stop by the Quonset Garage if you find yourself needing any supplies. Just remember our motto, Quonset Garage, where the water is always free.